Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q4 FY22 Earnings Conference Call of Nazara Technologies Limited, hosted by Prabhuda Sliladhar Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Janesh Joshi from Prabhuda Sriyadha Private Limited. Thank you and over to you Mr. Joshi. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, good morning everyone. Uh, on behalf of uh, Prabhudas Viladhar, I welcome you all to the uh, 4Q FY22 earnings call of uh, Nazara Technology. Uh, we have with us uh, the management uh, represented by Mr. Nitish uh, Mittasen, uh, JMD, uh, Mr. Manish Agrawal, uh, Group CEO, and Mr. Rakesh uh, Shah, Group CFO. Uh, I would now like to hand over the call to uh, the management for uh, opening remarks. Uh, thank you and over to you, sir. Good morning, everyone. This is Nitish Mr. Sen. Welcome to all of you for Nasara Technologies Q4 and FY22 earnings call. We have uploaded our results presentation on the exchanges, and I hope everybody has had an opportunity to go through the same. Nasara has already established itself as a leader in the Indian gaming industry, and it is now strategically positioned to capitalize on the tailwinds in our industry. Despite challenges caused by changes in Apple policies, regulatory disturbance in real money gaming and the negative impact of COVID-19 in live eSport events, Nazara has still delivered a strong performance in FY22. This is a great demonstration of our diversified platform strategy that allows us to continue to grow and remain resilient to any temporary headwinds in a particular segment of our business. In FY22, we generated revenues of Rs. 6.21 billion, up 37% year-on-year, EBITDA of Rs. 946 million, up 109% year-on-year, and a PAT of Rs. 507 million, up 273% year-on-year. We are glad to report that all of our business segments are profitable, and we have added significant cash uh, balances, which now totally amount to Rs. 7.3 billion as of uh, March end. The company remains free of debt. The above has been achieved without incurring any significant burn or losses, and all our companies are driving growth along with profitability. However, it is important to understand that in the phase of growth we are, growth and market leadership far outweighs near-term margin optimization, and we are very clear that we will continue with the strategy of prioritizing growth over margins into FY23 by remaining profitable and cash flow generative in every segment of our business. In FY22, we have added many new friends to our Friends of Nazara network. These include PublishMe, DataWorks, OpenPlay, the events IP from OML including NS7 Weekender, and most recently, Wings Gaming Accessories. We have also made successful investments in Rust Media, with whom we are launching a unique gaming entertainment show called Playground, as well as investments made in global gaming funds, Griffin Gaming Partners, and Bitcraft through which we intend to drive multi-pronged collaboration. Finally, I would like to conclude by saying that Nazara has a 22-year track record of creating value for its shareholders who have believed in our vision of making India a world gaming powerhouse. We have been through many cycles right from 2000 onwards, and our DNA is well adapted to make us anti-fragile in such times. As a gesture to our as a gesture of our appreciation towards the shareholders' faith in us and to commemorate our first anniversary as a publicly traded business, we are pleased to announce a bonus issue in the ratio of one bonus share for every one equity share held. Now I would like to request Manish to walk through the financial highlights. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nitesh. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Nazar's uh, quarter four and full year call and uh, look forward to interacting with you in the Q&A. Uh, I will quickly uh, summarize the information which is also uploaded in the presentation available on our site. Um, as Nitish has also kind of given you a flavor of the numbers, in the full year we delivered 621.7 uh, crores or 
uh, uh, of uh, growth of 37%. Uh, we delivered 946 million uh, in EBITDA, 109% up, and we delivered 507 million in PAT, which is 273% up. So, uh, I, the the resiliency of our portfolio, the momentum which we have seen in gaming, uh, makes us very very happy to say that this is a guidance which we had given in September end uh, to all of you. Saying that we will grow roughly in 35, 40 percent in revenue and 12 to 15 percent EBITDA margins, and we are happy to report that we have exceeded and met those kind of guidances which we gave you in September. Uh, as you are all aware, that we had few headwinds. We had a headwinds of Apple changing its policy in April 2021, which impacted our gaming, gamified segments growth. Uh, we had a, a on and off COVID. Uh, 19 continuing to really impact the offline events, which has a negative impact on our ability to generate revenues from brands, sponsorships of live events, and also kind of accelerate the penetration of esports. And then it also has a negative impact on sports era, uh, as well as next wave, which really get a bump up when there is a lot of sporting events happen in the country. So in spite of that, we have been able to take all of this in a stride and deliver a, a numbers which we had kind of projected and guided all of you. Uh, we are also happy that we just not really kind of look at what is the growth revenue growth, but we are also all our businesses are cash generated, profitable, and as of 31st March 2022, we have 723.1 million INR of cash across the group, um, and that's what. We are really kind of, while the current portfolio has its own momentum and it's growing, we believe that the the flywheel of M&A will now also start at cor at corporate as well as subsidiaries, as we have seen with Nordin last year, and with the cash being accumulated in most of the subsidiaries, uh, we are looking at how to deploy that uh, cash to drive organic and inorganic growth. Uh, I'll quickly kind of take you to segments. Uh, Esports has become our largest segment. It contributes to 49% of our revenues. Over the last three years, this segment has delivered a 90% CAGR, um, with Nordin growing over 65% and Sports Leader over 130%. If you look at the full year performance, the segment has grown 79%, um, and it has not just grown in revenues, but has also grown in your uh, absolute EBITDA numbers by 43%. As Nitish highlighted, this is a segment which is very important for us to build. We are the market leader here. We need to constantly keep building the ecosystem, keep investing in the ecosystem, whether it's IPs around events, IPs around content, IPs around talent, and forge new partnerships. Here, our objective is to continue to have this high growth momentum, and not just really at this juncture start looking at EBITDA maximization. Um, and that is very important to note because esports, our conviction has been very, very strong always, and we believe that esports will be the biggest viewed sports entertainment format in the next five to seven, ten years. And we don't want to be really kind of uh, losing that amazing and massive opportunity in India, South Asia, and other emerging markets as we really look at. Uh, we have seen the, how the esports viewership is growing. Um, in the ecosystem, uh, the data point in, is that BGMI launch, Battleground Mobile India launch, was concurrent viewership was as good as the first match of IPL, which which kind of underlines the conviction we have on the esports viewership in coming years that it's going to be really really important, and hence building those IPs and investing on the IPs across India and other emerging markets is very important for us. Uh, we believe that with economy opening up, offline events opening up, cinema, malls, restaurants, everything opening up, offline events are are going to be a reality. Keeping fingers crossed. And with that, we believe that our IPs like India Premiership, DreamHack, um, Edit Seven, the Cardi B Shuffle, YouTube Fan Fest, all of those IPs will see light of the day this year. And those are all kind of long term. Properties with with sustained brands and advertisers backing them, we see then a, a very healthy upside coming to the business in this year. Now this segment, as all of you know, uh, is 
is broadly driven by two companies, this Nordwin and Sportskira. Um, Nordwin continues to really remain a very stellar growth. I delivered 2108 million in FY22, which is 55% increase. It delivered an EBITDA of 157-29%. And if you look at from the business upside, as I mentioned, this coming year, we see a very, very clear, strong business upside coming from the offline events, which will add 70-80 crores to the Northern revenue number this year. Our media revenues um, are increased by 84% in quarter four, and it accounts for 20% of the overall business. We are also kind of embarking on building a D2C strategy where we have done acquisitions of merchandising company, Planet Superhero, gaming accessory companies, uh, company Wings, and we have also our, our selling of e-pins business is doing great. Combination of that, we believe uh, we can really unlock the community which comes to Northern in terms of participation of the tournaments, in terms of viewership, to really create a very robust gaming D2C business, which is kind of opportunities begging for itself in a country like India with the growth of uh, overall gamers as well as hardcore and midcore gamers. Uh, we also kind of created amazing partnership this year with uh, Gameloft for esports in this, with FIFA for EISL, and uh, we have also increased our partners from 27 to 103, which clearly demarcates or demonstrates the excitement around eco in the ecosystem comprising of brands, already platforms, publishers on around esports, and everybody wants to kind of really work and uh, talk to us on how they can really reach to this community through esports. Um, we we are, are sports Kira is the other one. Sports Kira delivered 792 million INR, 130% uh, growth, uh, with a 64% increase in EBITDA, delivering 274 INR million. Uh, so these are the numbers, but the story really behind these numbers is amazing. Uh, a company from India uh, is now really kind of in the top 10 sports site in U.S. as per Comscore. We are number seven. We used to be 17 a year back, and that's what we are inching up. Uh, we are seeing some amazing traction in terms of user uh, uh, across U.S. sports. Uh, we are seeing traction of monetizing them through programmatic, and we are also really looking at our e-sports business um, uh, contributing 20-25% of the overall mouse uh, for the sports era. And we are the by far the largest esports um, uh, uh, site in India uh, by any stretch of uh, uh, parameters which you can think of. Uh, if you look at our growth, is on a very very solid ticket. Uh, the growth has really happened from addition of content, um, high quality content which allows you to get more index searched. Social content sharing happens, which has delivered an increase in a mouse of 13%. We are also going to increase more US-based scores. We are also going to really increase video-based formats. Um, and overall, this business is a very, very strong momentum. And the combination of Northern and Sports Vida really puts us in a very bold position uh, in eSports business, not just in India, but globally. And, and that's a, it's a complete dominance and leadership. Uh, a small line about Publish Me, we acquired that I mean, in September. Uh, we have now, happy to note that we have created a very, very strong team in Middle East, a very capable team which has been now put together, uh, so that we are, this year we should start seeing uh, discussions with a lot of game publishers and brands about um, about partnerships in, in, in UAE, in Saudi Arabia, and that's what we are kind of really looking at. Um, this business, because we set up the whole team, uh, as you would all appreciate, uh, a team doesn't really become productive from day zero in Middle East. And this business is an investment phase. And over the year, we will working or we'll be working on this business to ensure that we have meaningful partnerships and we can really become a go-to game marketing game uh, game marketing agency in Middle East for global publishers and, and global gaming brands. And also create synergy between uh, Nordwin and publish me to really expand our esports footprint in Middle East. I'll move to Kidopia, which is a gamified segment. Uh, we all of you who are on the call have kind of discussed this. Um, the the we delivered a 16% growth in revenues. The growth momentum has slowed down. 
Uh, if you look at quarter four, year on year, it's almost flat. Uh, it's purely because of the new user acquisition, uh, which is becoming challenging uh, on account of the Apple ID pay policy. Uh, we are doing multiple experiments here uh, to ensure that a growth momentum can come back, including the mix of the channels, which at the beginning of the year last year to now has completely changed. And that speaks a volume about the resiliency of the team, where a lot of global players have demonstrated drop in their revenues, including Netflix, Zynga, Facebook, Unity. Uh, we have been able to really change the mix of our advertising spend and ensure that we are uh, delivered 16% growth or we have not declined in quarter on quarter. And that's what we are really doing. This has also taken its toll on cost per trial, which is increasing, and it will stay at that level for some quarters where we are really looking at more experiments. But the important thing is we have launched a brand campaign in US. Uh, we believe that the performance marketing can play that much role in the new normal of Apple policy. And hence, we are looking at how to build an endearing relationship uh, with the kids and their parents through a very, very warm brand campaign. And that has been launched. Uh, any brand campaign is not a magical pill which will create immediately. Uh, but we are really looking at some of the lead indicators of searches, of uh, organic downloads, all, that, all those parameters we will be keeping a watch. But we are now looking at uh, also merchandise. We have Captain Kid uh, is an IP, is our own IP. We have looked at how do we reward our loyal users through some kind of merchandising and build brand affinity. So there are many experiments happening on this particular uh, IP so that we can really look at from a growth point of view. Uh, uh, I will cover a lot of the nuances in the Q&A because I'm sure there will be a lot of Q&A on marketing spends, LTV, ARPUs, and then we can do that. Uh, freemium business, we had a modest growth of 9% year on year, uh, 21 crores or 213 million of revenue, 19% uh, EBITDA margin. Uh, the two things which I want to highlight, uh, we believe that the, the massive amount of community cult following that this IP has with the proven game engine model, uh, 4 into Web3 can be very successful, and we are actively working on that to really create a cricket offering in Web3 uh, leveraging uh, our strengths. Uh, given that some of the new uh, native, crypto native developers which are coming do not have uh, proven game engines, do not have proven communities, it kind of pull, puts us into a pole position to really capture cricket in Web3. And that's what we are really working uh, uh, actively. And we are setting up a blockchain team uh, to really look at what kind of form shape we will be doing it. And you will hear very soon from us. Uh, in terms of our m &A, in premium, we have mentioned that before. Uh, this segment needs to be really a much larger and bigger segment, not just 213 million revenue. And our m and will be, this will be the biggest focus in this year in terms of m and And we will be looking at game dev studios who are doing in the vicinity of 3 to $5 million and have high growth potential. And that's what we will be looking at um, in m and this year. Um, on the on the open play which we acquired in September, I'm very very pleased to inform you that we have grown the company. When we acquired, there was net revenue and run rate was around in the vicinity of 42 to 45 crores. Now that run rate is almost 65 70 crores. So that is something which is has been achieved through a very strong data driven tech platform which has looked at operational efficiencies of increasing our pools of repeated users creating a predictive modeling in terms of user acquisition, and that has resulted in growing almost like 14, 15% a month on month. Uh, our, in, our underlying ratios of cost per player has also come down, and we are looking at ROAS, which we used to be a break-even in terms of eight, nine months, has come to six, seven months, which is quite a very difficult task, in, given that we are a challenger in a, in a highly cluttered, um, ecosystem of Rami operators where top three, four guys are uh, very, very large. Uh, in spite of that, we have been able to kind of achieve it. And we, we are proudly say that in the industry, uh, we would be the same as some of the best, the top players in terms of our ROAS on break-even. And that gives us strong 
footing to increase our user strength as we keep moving post IPL scenario, and that's what we are discussing with the team. Our positive positivity on the data-based um, automated systems has also ensured that we have an uptake in EBITDA. However, at this juncture, I want to underline that if I can get an unit economics of five, six, seven months of break-even and then LTV CAC, which we have in this business, I would rather kind of press the accelerator on growth rather than trying to kind of maximize EBITDA. Uh, we are, as we had mentioned, and we had taken that we have uh, really looked at the product and tech capability of this team. Uh, glad to again inform that now we have built an underlying platform which can consolidate any number of brands with a common data view, one common tech platform. And the first company which we are integrating is our own Hala Play. Uh, the integration will be finished after the IPL. We didn't want to touch the Hala Play during IPL season, but all the underground work has already happened, and we are kind of amalgamating into one common tech platform. And that will be a good test and confidence for us as we go in consolidation in this area in the year forward. Our telco segment has declined by 17%. We delivered 624 million our revenues. Uh, the EBITDA margins, as you can see, has improved from last year. Uh, it is 22.8% versus 15.2%. Uh, the absolute EBITDA has also grown by 25%. This is a cash cow. However, the question which is there, are we kind of really writing it off in terms of decline? No, we are kind of really working uh, with new partners to see if we can really stem the decline and get it back to a growth phase. In a couple of next quarters, we will be able to tell you more uh, concretely whether this should be taken as a uh, growth driver or should it be taken as status quo or should you budget uh, some decline of 5, 7, 10 percent. So we'll come back to you. Uh, data works. Uh, some of you who are aware, we acquired the company in, uh, we finished the acquisition in the April. Uh, the consolidation will happen from the April onwards for this business. This is a this is an enabler capability building play for Nagara, so that we can really be a strong publisher in years to come, with the help of a deep ad tech stack, which can uh, help us to optimize user acquisition as well as ad monetization. Uh, the company is doing fantastically well, and in the quarter result, first quarter, we will talk more about DataWorks, and and during this quarter, I will give you more KPIs of DataWorks, and I'll give you more insights on DataWorks. Um, but however, uh, the company is doing very, very well, and uh, the integration with some of the subsidies, which are national integrations, whether it's Sports Kira, whether it's Next Wave, um, with Open Play, uh, Paper Mode, the discussions are happening between the leadership teams, and depending upon these experiments which will start, we'll be knowing that how and where we will be successful and where we will not be successful in driving these synergies. So in a couple of quarters, you will come to know on the data works on both on the synergy side, but on the KPIs and its growth in quarter one onwards, we will start sharing more details. Uh, last but not least, uh, I have mentioned this multiple times on m &A. Uh, Our current portfolio is super strong, uh, will deliver a lot of growth, but we, we do not want to kind of just sit and look at the current portfolio as some of you would like to do. We believe there are the opportunity of our gaming and the segments which we are is an amazing opportunity in front of us, and we want to kind of really plug white spaces which we have seen, whether it's um, white spaces in gamified learning, whether it's uh, expansion of esports into other emerging markets, whether acquiring of more game dev studios in, e in premium, or whether consolidating RMG, uh, or on the on the influencer building capability side, um, we would love to kind of really do an M&A because we believe those are essential white spaces for us to fill and create a very, very strong Nazara, Friends of Nazara network as a platform, uh, which we can really drive uh, completely. Uh, the capital allocation discussion for us is very simple. All our companies are really generating cash. If they need to kind of really look at it, they can deploy their own cash. If they need more than that, we can always sit down, so that's not an issue for them. Our capital allocation will be on m and side or increasing some equity uh, in downstream subsidiaries uh, wherever we think it's, it's an amazing opportunity for us uh, to kind of, A, 
uh, increase our uh, equity, B, reward the founder for the great performance they have delivered. Uh, our capital allocation predominantly would be on M&A, and that's, that's why uh, and the M&A at subsidiary level as well as at the corporate level will be um, a constant. Uh, to summarize, uh, I, I, I think this is supremely important for you to understand that you, this is a company which is on a very high growth path. Uh, we are a company which is really looking at these white spaces and the growth of our country, our own our portfolio. And we are on a very, very strong ticket, uh, ticket. And, um, we have a, we have a DNA and I, I like to kind of again reiterate a DNA of anti-fragile, uh, where we always believe that keep doing the work from first principles, look at businesses from first principles, and keep keep your head down and keep delivering the performance um, year after year. Uh, some of you may look at sequentially on quarters. I will urge you to look at on a year-on-year basis because of the seasonality so that you get the right picture and you are not kind of frustrated yourself on looking at the numbers. So I will kind of hand it over to... Um, to Mr. Joshi for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please press star and 1 at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Nitin Jain from Fairview Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is um, on the Nordwin business specifically. So uh, if I do a deep dive, uh, like we can see a drop in profitability for the quarter as well as for the full year. So like for FY22, we have dropped from say high single digits to uh, mid single digit. Uh, so if you could, you know, clarify, uh, is there some structural change in our approach uh, or, you know, in the market? So that is uh, the first question. And the second one is, uh, you know, with the increased competitive intensity from uh, players like uh, Sky Sports, uh, you know, uh, what is the path for this business going forward? Thank you. Good morning, Nitin. Thanks for the question. Uh, let me just kind of answer both of them. Nordwin, if you look at it, uh, in FY21, they delivered a 9% margin. In FY22, it's a 7.4% margin. I think in the presentation which we uploaded, it also includes publish me numbers. And I will ask my IR team to segregate them so that you can get a clear picture. So it's a 9% to 7.4%, while the revenue has grown by 55%. Uh, yeah, I've always maintained Nordbin would be a 6-7% business kind of number. Your 9% was predominantly because of no offline events really happening in FY21. In FY22, we had an 7 in March. And still, we have still not have more and more in offline events. Going forward, I would say you should peg Nordin in the, in the vicinity of 6 to 7% uh, because we would like to, A, do more and more offline and build the sports ecosystem. B, we will invest in new IPs and also augment our current IPs. So uh, that is where I would kind of really urge you to look at from a Nordin perspective. Uh, we are not really looking at the operating leverage hitting in the market right now. The operating leverage will come in when there are two factors really driving. One factor is multiplicity of OTP platforms bidding for the same content. We are already starting to see that happening between no core router uh, fighting with each other on, and on bidding with each other for the similar kind of content. And we are also seeing more and more platforms really emerging. And in the next three, four years, we should, that, that should drive the pricing of the content and IPs if you are IPs big. The second piece is the more and more games. If you look at, um, you have predominantly very few games in India which can really have any sports viewership and can say that we can command a viewership which is worthy for some OTT platforms and brands to look at. As more games really kind of come into India in the next two years, uh, you will have far more opportunities to create more uh, combinations of games and events 
uh, or you could drive your margins. So I think that is where we are. Uh, on the completion piece, my my two cents are very simple. Uh, we are kind of talking about 210, 11 crores of business revenue. I'm not sure if you have checked the sky numbers. They may maybe sub uh, five, six crores or maybe seven crores at best. Uh, second thing is I would really uh, look at all the esports, uh, more and more tournaments to come, because the more tournaments happen at grassroots, the better it is for a feeder for eye, eyeballs viewership for us. Now, as I have always mentioned, Nordwin is in the business of building IPs and the top 200 players. That grassroots is what we do with publishers to in- increase our catchment area for viewership, and many such players which will come in the market will only increase the grassroots for the large IPs to have more and more concurrent viewership as well as overall viewership. So it's a very welcome thing for us to have in market. Great. So that's quite helpful. Uh, If I could just uh, slip in a follow-up to the first question. Uh, So are you hinting that uh, due to the competition between the platforms, uh, Loco uh, and uh, the other one you mentioned, uh, are you hinting that there could be a pricing leverage here going forward? Some kind of pricing power? So, Nathan, for us, yeah. any sports IP always works on a pricing power coming out of their IP uh, strength and the viewership increase. And the case in point is very simple. You look at the media rights of IPL um, in the last three bidding rounds, right? And you will yourself see the pricing power which is coming in. Or you take any kind of sports IP which happen whether it's a FIFA broadcasting rights or it's a Wimbledon broadcasting rights. So fundamentally, whenever a sports IP becomes keeps becoming big, bigger, bigger, and larger than life, the pricing power comes in because the platforms would like to have head content to create and more users coming to their platform. Right. Okay, that's that's it from my side. Thank you. Thanks, Nitin. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mukul Garg from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hi, Manish. Good morning. Uh, Manish, uh, the uh, first question was on Kidopia. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned in the presentation that uh, you are looking at, I think, an incremental almost about 1.6 million spend on over YouTube as well as on brand building next quarter. Um, you know, can you just uh, help? Uh, you know. Or decide whether like you know help us with uh, any thoughts on uh, you know are this uh, uh, you know targets which will uh, what are the targets which you have internally which will uh, decide uh, success or failure of the exercise uh, is this something which will be uh, you know right now on a trial basis or do you expect uh, it to continue over next few quarters as well and also uh, are they being done outside the iOS uh, given that they are being done outside the iOS ecosystem. Uh, is there a way to monetize them outside as well uh, without compromising on user experience or uh, you still don't think that is an optionality which is there with you? Hi, Mukul. Good morning. Nice to hear from you. Uh, Mukul, on the uh, two things which you mentioned about, so if you look at broadly, we do 800K on a month, if you would see, uh, as business as usual. And the mix of that from the last year where you used to have 60% on Google, 30% on Apple, and 10% on Facebook has considerably changed. Uh, Apple remaining the same, but Facebook and Google have gone out and Unity, Garage Source, all those other channels have come in. So that's where your current staple bread butter is coming from 800K. We believe roughly around 300K odd uh, we can spend on YouTube because YouTube used to be one of the big component within Google of 60%. That used to kind of drive a lot of scale. Um, we are seeing some green shoots. It's still on a trial experimental phase to kind of quote your words. But if we really kind of can get that back, uh, the growth can be much higher because YouTube, as you know, is, is a great channel for uh, us to, it can it can give us a lot of volume if we can in the crack it. Uh, that's the, that's the, that part and roughly 300K is what we are putting for a grand campaign, uh, which we are really wanting to create a more mark of the funnel uh, trials uh, for Kidopia. We are running it across multiple touch points, whether it's connected TV, so whether it's broadcasting or even on YouTube or, or other publishers which are relevant for this. And uh, how we measure a brand campaign? YouTube campaign is still fairly straightforward because you will be able to figure out your your um, 
cost per trials. But um, on a brand campaign, you can't have a direct correlation for a cost per trial. So the indicators which we are going to look at, we are going to look at how is that organic searches of the of Kidopia as a brand is increasing. We are going to look at if there are increase in visitors on the page of App Store and Google uh, from these campaign. Um, that is the kind of indicators which you would like to track uh, to see the efficacy of a brand campaign. Right. Sure, and and, and uh, the other point was about uh, given that these are these are outside the iOS ecosystem. Is there a way to build them outside and save that thirty uh, percent? I don't know, Mukul, on that. Right, I don't know on that because uh, is that the problem? Are we solving now? We are not. The problem statement we are solving is how do we get more and more velocity of new new subscriber addition into the business. Uh, at this juncture, I don't think the 30% is a is a is a problem we should be really looking at. That's a that's a good problem to solve once we have seen, let's say, a marketing campaign working or YouTube working, and then we come into efficiency of optimization of margins, and that's where we will come into it. But right now, our single mind razor focus is how do we get velocity of new subscribers increasing uh, without compromising on their retention, uh, basically without compromising the quality of users. Sure, and I think uh, you know. Second question, uh, I think broadly during your introductory remarks, uh, you know, over I think multiple statements, you have kind of peppered it. But uh, how are you looking at uh, the M and A strategy after the recent price correction? Uh, do you expect the interest of uh, you know potential uh, targets to be more on cash deals, given that the broader market price has corrected so much? Uh, and you know, how much of the cash you will kind of earmark uh, for M and A? So, Mukul, uh, correction has happened across the market, not just from Zara, right? And uh, I'm sure if you talk to a lot of people who do in the private deals, the valuation expectations or the the the, the uh, excitement or exuberance around the valuations, even in the private space, has come down quite sharply. Um, that was also giving us an opportunity to look at more and more studios outside and also in India. Because uh, the same discussions which were happening at a different multiples are happening or can happen based on my understanding with bankers and some of the founders at the lower numbers because the investors sitting there also have kind of uh, realigned their, their expectations. So I think it's an overall correction which is really going to help. It's, it's a relative. It's not an absolute for Nazara and, and somebody else. The second thing is we are also going to be looking at uh, deals where we can really create a combination of, let's say, let's just to give you a perspective, if in real money gaming space, we are kind of really saying to the founders that you can merge your equity with open play and create and take that equity rather than Nazara's equity because that's where you can now build scale. And the companies which are needing to grow, they need to really look at one is to one becoming 2.5 or 3 or 5 or 11, and they understand that. So a lot of your equity dilution, which um, is you could avoid by having a downstream consolidation happening while you can pay some cash, which you have raised at a higher value and put it to use for your deals. So these kind of discussions, we'll be very, um, we'll be doing that. Uh, we believe that the Nazara's goodwill and the track record of scaling companies after taking them over really is a very, very strong uh, goodwill which we have among the uh, founders, and that is really will help us in doing these MAs. Sure, no, that, that, that was uh, really useful. Thanks. Uh, just a small clarification, if I, if I may. Uh, you know, there was a small 10 crore investment in Kidopia. Was there a requirement for cash infusion or? You know, is there something which more uh, cash requirement can come in from that side? No, Mukul, it was secondary. Um, and this was as per a shareholder agreement. If the founders have achieved that target, which I remember was 170 odd crores, if they had done it within a time period, um, they were entitled for a 10 crore secondary from Zara, and that's what, that, that, that's what we did. And as I mentioned in my opening remarks, we'll be happy to have founders who are hitting the wall out of park and if they need some secondary uh, uh, earning, earnings, we will not hesitate because that's our way to kind of really uh, 
demonstrate our endorsement of their great efforts. Fair enough. Uh, thanks a lot for taking my question and best of luck uh, for 2022. Thank you. Thanks. Look forward to many more interactions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able, able to address questions from all participants, we would request you to please limit your question to two at a time. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deep Shah from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Thanks, Manish, uh, for the opportunity and for the detailed clarification at the start. Uh, Manish, two questions from my side, both on the esports uh, business. Um, one is about you know your own IPs and then the events you do for for others, whereby some events are streamed on our channel and then some are not. Is there a way you could help us better understand the differences and their respective contributions? Because where I'm coming from is one: how do we read the content hours metric that you provided? And second, when we thought about an uh, increasing share of distribution money or broadcast money, I think a lot of it will only flow to us in our own IPs or rather events which are on our own stream, streaming platforms. So if you can help us better understand that, that would be very helpful. Perfect. And I think a lot of clarity lies in your answer and I'll just kind of pull that out. So we, we do two types of events. One, we do white label, what we call white label events, which we work with the game publishers or let's say brand or let's say a platform which wants to kind of really attract more and more people at grassroots level. Now, a grassroots level will not kind of really attract so much of viewership because you are not having the best of the players really playing. That becomes a cost plus model for us. And that's why it's called white label. Uh, and that's very important for us because it seeds the market, it builds the esports market and it becomes a feeder to our viewership of our top IPs where the best players are playing. Now, what is our IP? Our IPs are IPs which we are organizing, which we are investing, which we are defining the price pool and we are taking the risk. It's not a cost plus model. It's a, you are investing in execution, you are investing in price pool, you are investing in uh, marketing of it and you are investing in kind of really building a long-term brand out of it. Now, those are the IPs as you rightly said they will have a price uh, premium over a period of time. And that's the sporting IPs is our moat and will remain a moat. And hence, it is important for us to keep strengthening our current IPs and building more IPs with across different cohorts and segments of consumers, players, games, um, geographies, etc. And that is where uh, this business is all about. Uh, now, if you look at one thing which you mentioned and I want to correct, uh, Nordwin is not into a channel. It's not, it is not having a streaming platform of its own uh, because we don't believe that that's a very, very um, path to profitability business, at least for next three to five years. And hence, what we have done is we have kind of restricted ourselves to create premium IPs and content thereof. And then we partner with OTD platforms, which are wanting to have that content and pay us for the viewership on their platform exclusively. So we don't have any channel. Our, our IPs, since the market is still in, in space, we try to kind of build it on YouTube because YouTube is still the biggest reach and the widest reach and it creates more and more viewership and the IPs um, strength keeps increasing until unless there is a significant amount of money on the table for us to really take our IP onto some platform which has more, which has much lower reach uh, we would not be very open to doing that. We would continue to build the IP viewership um, and IP strength uh, on YouTube uh, or any other channel which can give us far-reaching reach. Uh, IPs which we are creating, like watch arts, which you spoke about, those are the IPs we are working with publishers to create them. Uh, and these are long-term relationships uh, because your Valorant is a, is a game which is very popular in PC users. As and when mobile happens, it can be popular. You can't really just be dependent on one game for your viewership. And you need to co-invest along with the game publisher to really build that ecosystem. And that's where we really come into picture as a long-term partner for any game publisher. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Uh, uh, the second question is on, um, so we had earlier spoken about trying to get in live advertisements uh, in our streams 
Uh, and I think in February, we had also acquired 51% in the Rust distribution. So any updates on that? So two different questions. Rust for us is a content play. And as Nitish made in an opening remark, we are working with Rust to capture one area of gaming which is not yet with us is a gaming on entertainment content, but with a very, very strong context of gaming. And that's where the Rust capabilities come of creating content, distributing content, monetizing content. And that's why this investment and partnership is there, where the entire gaming monetization will be kind of coming to us. And we'll be working very closely with Rust to really give gamers insights, the influencers which they need, and co-create these kind of IPs. Uh, that's where the Rust is. In terms of streaming and advertising on streaming, as you would appreciate that when you do an exclusive deal with a, let's say, a local router, uh, it's like uh, IPL being given to Hotstar or Star Sports. Then the broadcasters, it's their job to figure out what is the uh, ads they want to insert and where they want to insert. Uh, similarly, on YouTube, we do not have much say on, on the live streaming uh, or a content uh, ad insertion. However, we can always add sponsorships and that's what we do. Um, thanks, thanks, Manish, for this clarification. I'll join back with you for further questions on Gerogra. Perfect. Thank you. Request participants to please limit your question to two at a time. The next question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello. Um, am I audible? Yes, Rahul. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. So, uh, firstly, uh, just a small extension to a question that has already been asked, but uh, on the Kidopia side, I mean, uh, we have mentioned that our ranking, rankings are more over secured, and you have clearly mentioned that you want to top it up with the higher scale uh, with a subscription growth as an uh, mindset, but just wanted to understand your thought that uh, will that be a more like a Q1, Q2 kind of a thing or that is something like we have to get the subscriber uh, growth irrespective of the cost kind of a mindset because I guess uh, our consumer side of the, from a demand perspective, uh, must be still very robust given the category it is in. Uh, then why to shy away from uh, going for a big time growth when our rankings are intact and we can afford to spend uh, in the existing opportunities uh, as, as we are <coughs> equally looking strong on the inorganic side, why not invest big money in the organic opportunity itself? Rahul, you are absolutely right. Uh, and that's why if you see, I mentioned 800K was business as usual. We are almost putting 600K extra on aggressive growth per month on seeing that how do we really kind of take it forward combination of YouTube and brand. Uh, we would love to kind of do it start from May and then continue it for at least May, June. Uh, evaluate ourselves on how is it doing. Uh, trust us, if we are seeing the positive effect, we are not going to shy away from investing into that business uh, because this business we are has huge amount of conviction uh, on the headroom it has for growth. And the as you rightly said, the the robustness of the product reflected in retention engagement continues to be very good. Um, we will look at that in June, and then if things are even looking at 80% okay, we'll continue to do it in Q2. So it, this will be an, you know, a constant uh, review and take kind of a step on the next quarter, rather than um, if I tell you that next whole year we are going to do this, I, I'm just kind of taking a, a blind uh, uh, stay, making a blind statement, but uh, the intent is what you articulated, and our intent is exactly the same. And and we don't have any constraint from the uh, the founders in terms of any potential dilution if if, if there's a need of uh, infusion uh, to do that. Rahul, if you know, understand, founders are the are the guys who are really passionate about the product, and that's why our structure works beautifully. And they are spending endless hours to kind of really get back to uh, growth because no founder likes to not see a growth. Um, and, and and in this uh, in this process, if they have to take money, they will take money. Just for your information, Kidopia already has 75 crores of cash with them. Right. So it's not that they are not cash. They are also a positive working capital business, barring the brand campaign. Uh, so from all of that perspective, uh, they have the cash. We 
if they need the cash neither they nor will us nor nor us will shy from putting in money right right uh, that's quite helpful uh, and if i can ask one more uh, on the rmg side uh, we have shared a couple of very interesting uh, matrix in terms of how we have done the reduction in the <clears throat> break even time period uh, i would appreciate if you could uh, share uh, the right kpis for us to follow in this space to understand you know how th- uh, these things will play out and how the monetization here would play out uh and also what kind of synergies we would we plan to bring by you know uh, getting everyone into one platform so uh, more inputs here would be helpful so all only kpis but there is a there is a bit of uh, what i say sensitivity on competitive information versus public information right uh the ros itself uh, is is something which is very competitive information because it kind of really exposes you from other challenges who can come after you and this is a very competitive business uh um, in spite of that we came out with the roas we've also told you cost per pay ratio and we have looked at what's happening uh let me kind of think through on what kpis i can really sh- share which helps you in kind of giving a confidence on on lead indicators but also not kind of stain the business competitive advantage which we might be creating so let me come back to you over next uh, few weeks on what needs to be done there um otherwise uh the the growth in their user base growth in their revenues and growth in their uh, unit economics is something which which can be at a high level but it's an outcome uh, so let me come back to you on that um uh, all these synergies as i mentioned in my opening remarks uh building one tech platform which can really power multiple brands Uh, at the consumer facing level is the goal of this uh, product tech stack uh, we have built it uh, now hala play is the first one and uh, as we move along uh, in in the talking to other rmg players which are which can be complementary and add value um, this is a common tech platform which will come handy and this is the the same kind of impacts positive impacts which you have seen uh, on the Uh, on the increasing the arcus of repeat repeat users or retained user uh, having a predictive modeling on user acquisition will be given off the shelf to any other platform which will come become part of it besides removing the frictions uh, which um, uh, which which uh, the user may have on their login or in their registration or in their deposit right right much much appreciated just a clarification you said something on the uh, norwin that offline uh, events this year would add something incremental revenue i missed that number if you could share that again 70 odd crores is what i believe is, is the addition which we will see this year thank you i would request mr jain to rejoin the queue for follow up question also request participants to please submit your question to two at a time The next question is from the line of Karan Uppal from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I'm Anish. Uh, uh, so, firstly, a clarification on Kidopia. So, the revenue last quarter got impacted by around six crores due to accounting change, uh, which was expected to be added in Q4. But if I look at Q4 incremental revenue addition, it's just four crores. So, does that mean that on a quarterly on a quarterly basis, Kidopia has declined? No, no. I think you are reading it wrong. They, it was not six crores to be added back to the next quarter. It is just the okay. rollover number because what you are doing earlier is that because you are getting monthly data, you are monthly subscribers. Whether the person has come on twenty eight or was coming on first, you are taking as a month revenue. Now that you have started getting daily data, you are you, you had to take one time hit, and that was Q three of six crores the hit which you took. It is not to be added back. So. If you look at the real number, fifty-three versus fifty-four is what you will look at. Okay, okay, got that. Thanks. Uh, secondly, on Kidopia, uh, Manish, if you look at uh, the CAC is now at thirty-six uh, versus twenty-six a year back. Uh, so, how high can it go from here? What's the upper limit uh, for you know LTV to CAC to break even? Uh, and also, any color on the subscriber growth for FY twenty three? I think uh, what Rahul was asking a similar thing. Uh, the so choices in front of us is that we look at bringing it down to 28, 29, 30, and throttle the subscriber growth. The choice is to continue to be at 36 and 
that 800k which i said is broadly at the same level we'll continue to get what we are getting today right and the other thing is completely remove the guardrails of cost per trial and go for aggressive growth and kind of we look at uh, today our break even in terms of advertising spends comes in 12 to 13 months which used to be 10 months um and you can just say a call that hey, listen the market is very big strong and you you can really go beyond cpt i don't think we are at that stage in our mindset we are saying that the cost per trial will remain at 36 37 35 whatever number but in that range um as far as the performance marketing is concerned when i will take tell you the results from next quarter i'm not going to add the brand marketing to it because brand marketing can't be just added to a performance marketing and arrive at cost per trial so i'll kind of report it in a separate number and and give it to you um so that's what we are kind of really looking at uh are we going to go back to 28 29 30 level or 24 no we are not because we believe that the product is very strong market is very large and we do not want to throttle the new subscriber addition um uh, just because we want to maximize the data so based on uh, uh your understanding as well as uh, the the experiments which we are doing with all marketing um what kind of a subscriber growth can we do in f3 uh, honestly the brand marketing nobody can predict youtube as i mentioned it's a it's a uh, in, a, in let's say in couple of months when we talk about june quarter i will be able to give you some insights on youtube whether it's working or not working right as of now let's keep them as a as an experimental ideas from a business as usual perspective you can look at a 5 6% increase in the subscriber numbers right um but that's what without any experiment if we were not to do an experiment uh if we were to kind of really just sit idle and sit tight on our cash i don't see that as a as an as a optimal activity for us to uh, be okay with Thank you. I would request Ms. Opal to rejoin the queue for follow-up question. The next question is from the line of Subrata Sarkar from Mount Intra Finance. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi, Subrata. Yeah, my question has been answered. Thank you. All right. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kapil Agarwal from Aitas Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, Ms. Uh, so... uh manish i wanted to understand the thought process behind the bonus issue that uh, uh you have uh, come up with so i just wanted to understand the thought process behind that i will like nitish to come in uh, uh he is it's it's his prerogative to answer this and i would request him to do that yeah sure so happy to share that so uh, you know like i said in my opening statement uh, you know nazara has uh, had a 22 year history of creating value for his shareholders and uh, we just felt uh, that uh, you know to appreciate our shareholders as well as commemorate the uh, you know first anniversary of being a listed issue this is something we wanted to do uh, for the shareholders and and the sudan sir thank you yeah thank you thank you the next question is from the line of aman vich from astute investment management please go ahead yeah <clears throat> good morning uh, manish uh, my first set of question uh, is on the esports Right, uh, basically on not win. Uh, so uh, you have mentioned that 20, 21 percent contribution for this full year was from media, uh, right? Uh, so if you can break the remaining 80 percent, and if you can also talk about the growth. The second part on the not win is uh, on the uh, number of events which we are planning for F5 23 to come to that uh, 70-80 crore uh, number which we are targeting, and if you can talk about this here. Yeah, I mean, I thanks for asking uh, very good question both of them. So if you look at I'll answer the second one very easily. If you look at um, pre-covid, we used to have India Premiership uh, which was roughly a million dollar property. We used to have uh, our dream hack half a million. We used to have NS7 generating around 20 30 30 odd crores. Um so you're talking about 30 37 5 42 and then you had other properties which we acquired from OML of 20 25 odd crores and that's the break up between Bacardi Shuffle UT Fences and uh, some uh, there is one or one or two more properties so these are all established properties long term properties 7 8 years vintage 
with, with, with brands who have been backing them up. And so that's where there's just a, no escalation in their sponsorship. It is just coming from what we used to do in 2019 uh, or OML used to do uh, 2019. Yeah. On the non-media piece, your question, 20-20%. So there are four lines of business which we have besides media. Uh, I think uh, somebody else had asked about IPs. So we have white label business. We have our own IP business. Uh, we have uh, a, D, a D2C business. Uh, these are the other three businesses besides the uh, media business which we have uh, in our portfolio. And uh, roughly white label business uh, uh, the, the breakup, we have not given of each of them individually, and we would not, not like to kind of really do that. Uh, but that's the three lines of businesses besides the media business, which we have in our portfolio. Yeah. If, if you can talk about the growth, if not the uh, numbers, actual numbers, but yeah. what was the growth we had seen in FI? Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you look at the overall growth of what, around 55% is what we are kind of really looking, have, have generated in Norway, right? Uh, and if you see on that, we have said media business has grown roughly around 84%, right, in quarter four. Uh, all our businesses have broadly grown in the similar lines, give or take some percentages here and there. And it is not that one line of business is kind of really creating or driving the overall growth. Um, in this year, 22-23, uh, with the addition of Wings as gaming accessory brand and then superhero, uh, and the e-pins business daily doing, we believe that could become a significant uh, contributor to growth besides the offline event which I spoke about, and and the D2C business can itself emerge as a as a great uh, uh, community unlocking exercise for us uh, in going next three four years. Um, this year we may be in investment mode on on the gaming accessory business. But going forward, as the scale really happens, operating leverage is very strong, and we should be able to see this to be a good margin driver as well. Sure. My second and final question is on the if you, on the MNA side. Uh, if you can talk about what was the total outflow uh, and divide it also in terms of cash outflow as well as the share based outflow for FY22. Uh, as well as the, uh, the pending for FY23 and our target maybe for FY23. So I don't have a target for FY23. As I mentioned that we don't take a target and say that this is a chunk of money which has been allocated to m &A because we are not doing an opportunistic m and We are looking for good teams first and good products first and then kind of really deploy our cash. Um, so there is no target target, but there are white spaces as I mentioned and those white spaces teams are working to fill that. However, are we kind of desperate to, to do an m to drive a growth? No. Uh, our m and is predominantly coming from our to continue to have our dominance and leadership and market share. Um, that's where we are. To answer your question on FI22, total investments split into cash and equity, I can ask the IR team to give it to you. I don't have a handy table in front of me, but we can quickly put it and send it to you. Uh, sure, Manish. Uh, that is it's from my side. Thank you. Ami, can you please take note of it and then we do it. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dipesh Kashyap from Equiris. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my questions. Sir, just to uh, clarify on the 70 crore number that you are saying the addition will happen this year. So that is mainly from the OML events, right? Because they were not happening. But where I, when I consider your events, IP events, they were already happening in the online mode. So when you do in offline mode, how does your revenues change? I just want to understand that. We faced two things. India Premiership and DMAC didn't happen, in, even in online, if you see in 21, 22. So those events didn't happen at all, right? And second thing to answer your question, how does it change? Uh, I'm sure you've attended a lot of online conferences, and you know the engagement and the energy on online versus an offline. And the brands really shy away from sponsoring an online conference versus what they want to put in money in offline. But that's where the real energy, excitement, interaction, everything happens. And which is why uh, you would see many more uh, events happening uh, where the brands will be more and more okay. Or even in our your line of field or my line of field, business conference is starting to happen with sponsorships uh, coming along. Right. So we didn't, do, we didn't do our events, and that's what we will do now. 
Got it. So any number you can give to the Dream Act and the initial India event, how much revenue can they generate per year? Dream Act was roughly around three and a half, four crores, four and a half crores kind of a number. India premiership used to be five to seven crores. Now um, those are the numbers which we need to go and secure from our brand advertisers. Uh, there has been a gap of two years, and uh, the brands have also kind of moved on. So let's kind of really work on those things. Got it. Lastly, sir, on the M&A, you mentioned the premium segment will be a focus area this year. So, so does it also mean that given the headwind you are facing in the Kidopia, uh, the acquisition in the gamified learning uh, segment, that is 7 to 12 age category that you have talked about a lot of times, uh, that has taken a backseat? No, not really. Not really. Just that the, the opportunities in premium are far more because it's a game that studios. Opportunities in 7 to 12 are lesser. Um, and that's why we don't want to kind of do sequentially, saying that we first do this and then follow this and then do this. It's it's a purely a function of uh, what is the your ability to fill those white spaces across segments. Now, at the esports level, Nordwin has its own team and they can drive their own white spaces. Uh, similarly, in Kidopia, now we are kind of really looking at them driving the white spaces at premium at the corporate level. We need to drive because that segment is very small, and likewise in the real money gaming. So other two segments have have their own strength. They have their own team, and now they are strengthening their teams down below for for M and A. So there is no backseat there. It's a function of what we want to really kind of uh, pick up and move forward from the opportunity available in the market. Got it. So thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you, everyone, for spending time today with us. We look forward to being in touch and uh, delivering strong results in the year that's uh, FY23. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of Prabhudas Leeladhar Private Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.